What is up guys? It is Tony here and today we are taking a look at the state of the Apple Retina display in 2020. So the Retina display years ago, in my opinion, was the best looking display on the market. Um, when it first came out on the iPhone uh, 4, I was so excited to see it in person. And once I finally did, it was literally everything Apple promised. Um, all these years later, uh, 4K displays have been on the market for a while now with laptops, but the earliest 4K displays that I had a chance to look at in store on display units did not impress me because honestly, they were lacking brightness, they were lacking color gamut. All around, they just felt kind of, for, uh, kind of second rate, whereas Apple's displays have always been state of the art. But I got to admit, taking a look at this HP Spectre X360, which you can now get on sale for pretty much the same price as a starting MacBook Pro at $1349, this display is breathtaking. And it really takes you back and makes you realize what you're getting outside of the retina world when you get that wide color gamut. Because sure, Apple advertises that their displays have a relatively wide color gamut, but other companies are taking that to the fullest extreme. And I could not believe that after using this display for a bit, being astonished by it, and going back to my daily driver right now, my M1 Air, that I kind of was missing it. I kind of was missing it. So. I went ahead and ran them side by side, synced up in 4K video, and even on YouTube streaming 4K, this display just looks plain sharper, plain more vivid. Um, you know, I even I even went around the house and asked family if they agreed with me on that or if it's just bias, and they all agreed. Sure, the Apple display is brighter. Uh, in this variant, because this is a 340 nit variant at this price point. But it really doesn't matter because I don't even want to look at the Airs display anymore because it's lacking so much color. Now, you guys most likely won't be able to see this at all in video, but even on this orange bird, you could see there's a much darker spot on the chest of the bird, the crest of the bird, than on the MacBook Air. And in person, that is much more vivid. And what that means is the color gradients as you're moving from shaded parts of the color to the more well-lit parts of the, the 3D object, the bird, the animal, this beautiful, stunning peacock. As you move between the well-lit areas and the dim areas, you get more of a gradient. It's actually very akin to what ray tracing does in games. So for that reason, you actually get a much more realistic image to the point where when you're staring at it straight up, just staring at it for a good few minutes, you start to trick your mind into thinking you're seriously looking at an animal in front of you. And if that's a lion, you might get a little frightened for a second. That doesn't happen with retina displays, unfortunately. And that being said, this also, as far as, you know, I'm talking about the entertainment standpoint, this also benefits content creators because content creators obviously want to have an accurate view of what they're editing, their colors and such. And the thing about Apple displays, you will notice that their colors are punchier. But that being said, that isn't accurate. They're simply punching up their saturation, which loses detail in the most colorful parts of the flower. And you can see that here you're losing a lot of detail. Look how much detail is there on this bird. You're gonna see a lot of detail in those feathers. Moving really close on this 4K display. On the Apple side, you're losing a bit of that detail. It gets a little more smudgy, it gets a little bit more blurry. And it's because when you boost saturation, you're losing detail. When you boost uh, contrast, you're losing detail. And these are things that Apple does to make their displays look more punchy and vibrant because they're actually lacking the tuning that would make them look th vibrant in the first place. The issue is that Apple did a lot of tuning years ago 
and they called it. They went, that's it. That's it. That's what we need. And they've been using the same calibration, roughly the same display for the longest time. Um, but do not fear, 2021 will probably bring us micro LEDs and or mini LEDs, sorry, which is most likely going to completely change the game for Apple's displays. So we probably will see much better color gamut in their newer technology. My guess is that their innovation has been focused on the new technology rather than the old technology, which has allowed the old technology to lag behind. So all I'm trying to say here is if you are a photo editor or video editor or any sort of creative and you are looking at these M1s, one really good reason to hold back is new display technology, which will be being announced in 2021. So stay tuned.